Hi, my name is Dr. Kristen Cram, and I'm the Director of Clinical Services at Denton County Friends of the Family. Um, part of that is I'm over our counseling program as well as our child care program. I want to thank you for volunteering your time um, to be with our kids in our child care room. I wanted to film this um, for you to watch before your first time in there, just going over some rules as well as tips and tricks um, to working with some of these kiddos. So I'm going to share my screen. So with this, um, we have usually a couple kiddos in there at a time. It's not anywhere near as much as we used to as our groups are currently being run virtually. So a lot of times we have sibling pairs. With sibling pairs potentially comes some um, disagreements and arguments and things like that. Uh, so if you have a child who is screaming or yelling at you or another child or a sibling, um, one thing that you can do is get down on their level. So get down eye to eye with them, validate their feelings. So you can say, I know you're feeling really angry right now, but this other child is not for yelling at. And then you can redirect them in a way that's gonna be a little bit healthier for dealing with their anger. We have these giant um, bean bags in their room that they could easily just kind of hit or even just put their little face in there and scream, whatever they need to do to help get that anger out in a healthy way. Um, if a child hits or punches another child, again with siblings, this might happen. Um, it's more common with siblings as opposed to just a random child in the room. Uh, you could remain calm. In the room, there might be a child care staff member or one of my intern volunteers. If not, I'm going to have a list of extensions that you can call to help um, if needed, but you're going to work on setting that limit. Um, with the child. The key is not to get angry at the child or yell at the child, but being really calm when you are delivering these limits. You want to be calm but firm. If the child is refusing to listen to the rules or follow the rules, again, we'll have those extensions for you to call. If a child is self-isolating, maybe they're a little bit scared, um, we have a ton of different activities in the room for them. Um, what I usually like to do and what usually kind of works with them is um, saying, like, oh, do you want to color a picture with me? So that there's a joint activity that they can do that they can still be kind of quiet, um, but they're also being um, in relationship with you. Um, if you have an idea of something that you want to do with the kids along with like an arts and crafts theme, we have a lot of supplies in our play therapy closet as well. So just let me know and I can help pull some things for you, but we do have some items in the childcare room too. So anything that's in there is up for grabs for whatever you would like to do. Um, if a child though does not want to play and says, no, like I wanna do this. I've had a kiddo who just wanted to go in and sleep and that was totally fine. We respect what they're saying. So don't force them to do any sort of activity. Um, with limit setting, we have a very specific model that we follow. It's called the ACT model. So with this, you want to acknowledge the child's feeling, communicate whatever limit is, and target potential alternatives. So some examples of this might be, um, if you know the child's name, that's best. So you can say, Bobby, I know you're really angry, but I am not for hitting. You can choose to hit the pillow or tear up this piece of paper. So again, you want to be really calm, which is hard when you are the one who might be getting hit. Again, that does not happen very often, but this is just a good example. So you are acknowledging that child's feeling. You are communicating that limit that you are not for hitting. And then you're giving them appropriate and healthy alternatives to where they can still get that need met. So the idea is never to make a child feel like their, um, their feelings are wrong or bad. And I think that that's a little bit hard because I know like we've kind of grown up to think like being sad is a bad feeling, being angry is definitely a bad feeling. Um, but we want these children to know that all of these feelings are healthy, all these feelings are normal. Um, and here's some things that you can do to be able to kind of overcome that and deal with that in a healthy way. So some things to remember. Um, you want to set the limit in a calm and controlled voice. You want to be consistent. So if you've already set that limit, that limit is going to be the limit throughout the rest of the time there. Being patient. Sometimes it doesn't work the first time. you got to kind of keep at it and keep being calm. 
Um, so the child might even need two to three limits set. That's also pretty normal. Just keep using that ACT model. A trick though, if something's kind of like happening in the moment where maybe that child's about to like hit his sibling or something like that, you can switch up the order and start with the C. So um, your brother's not for hitting. I know you're really angry and I know you want to hit him, but your brother is not for hitting. You can choose to hit the beanbag instead. Um, it's okay to practice this. It feels really weird. These are things that I train my play therapists in, and it is like learning a new language sometimes because this is not necessarily the way that we talk um, on a day-to-day -day basis, so give yourself a little bit of grace. Um, I practice on my dogs. Uh, my husband apparently even has gotten really good at using this method, so I think I must say it a lot. Um, but staff is here to help too. So if you are in the room alone with a child and something is happening, again, we have staff all over the place that can definitely help out with that. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing this and then just going over some basic generic child care rules. Um, we are not a licensed child care facility. So if you have a younger child who goes to the bathroom and needs like a diaper change or something like that and needs assistance in the bathroom, um, you should have a location of where the parent is. We have a list of extensions, so you would just call up to wherever office the parent's at and have them come down to change that child's diaper or help with um, that in any way. Uh, we also don't allow, unless it's like an infant, um, kids to sit in our laps. Um, again, we are a domestic violence and sexual assault agency, so some of our kids might have had experience with sexual assault. Um, so it's really good to have that boundary, but they can sit next to you if they like want to read a book or something like that. And you just want to set that limit that they're not for sitting in your lap. Um, I think those are the big ones. Just making sure, again, you're calm with them. They're a lot of fun. Um, I know I help out in child care a lot too. So I definitely, you're going to brush up on your go fish skills and Uno skills and definitely coloring skills. Um, we have a TV with Netflix, so I will be sure to have that password available to you guys um, if that is ever needed. Um, but I just want to thank you again for volunteering your time. So if you need anything, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or my staff.